Hello and welcome. My name is Jeffrey Kennedy and welcome back to another episode of Elliott Wave Junctures. As many of you know, I'm also the editor of Futures Junctures, which is a sister product or the sister product to Elliott Wave Junctures, and that one's more, uh, more commodity based, again, as many of you already know. Okay, the reason we're going to be talking about that, or the reason I'm mentioning that, is today we're going to look at specifically sugar as well as soybean oil. Earlier in the week, specifically on Monday, in both markets, I was actually looking down for further decline in both markets. And, I, and as you can see in, in so sugar, as we have right here, we most certainly have fallen to the downside since Monday's, uh, since my Monday forecast in sugar as well as in soybean oil. What I'd like to actually do today is spend some time, just a quick moment, and actually explain why I was doing just that, looking down, why the forecast was actually bearish. Okay, well, first of all, here's the larger trend in the market in sugar, and this is my actual subdivisions. Now, Monday, we were essentially right about here, I guess, in the trading. And what I was essentially looking for was, number one, this move to the upside, this small little advance, was a three-wave move. It was, and we'll be looking at the specifics of that shortly. But more importantly, at this stage of the game, what I was really looking at was that, well, number one, the most common Fibonacci retracement for a fourth wave is a 382 multiple of wave three. So essentially, we had that coming into play at 2116. So I was naturally looking for a counter trend move to essentially move to that area and then turn down from it. Also, too, if we apply the guideline, the Elliott Wave guideline concerning the depth of the corrective waves, we know that whenever a five wave structure is complete, a retracement occurs that pushes prices into the span of travel of the prior fourth wave, most often ending near its terminus. Well, that level comes again. It comes in very, uh, very nearby, and of course, this is the span of the prior fourth wave. So this is the area that I'm actually looking for prices to move into and then reverse from. Now we can actually fine tune that by moving or dialing down in our time frame because, because notice this is a 240 minute price chart. So essentially, what I want to do now is go to a smaller term price chart, and this is a 60 minute price chart, and you'll begin to see wave patterns a lot more clearly. And what you'll initially see is this one, two, three, four, five, small five wave advance, followed, followed by a three wave decline, and then another little small one, two, three, four, five into this high here, I believe, which is 2093. In other words, this is a five, three, five pattern. This is a zigzag, okay? Also, too, notice the move to the upside is contained within parallel lines. That is a key characteristic of counter trend price action. Also, too, nearby, note that at 2081, wave C equals the distance traveled in wave A. Again, another key characteristic of specifically zigzags as well as flats. So in other words, if we take a look at the short-term structure, we see a very clear pattern. It's a 535 pattern. We also can incorporate the larger time frame here, the 240-minute price chart. Clearly see the trend is down in this market and that the advance that we did see really adhered to all the, the guidelines or characteristics or traits of counter trend or corrective price action. Now, one thing I also did really uh, like about this um, price chart and why I believe that my forecast was confident and why I was looking for lower, uh, lower prices here was that we also had on the daily chart level a nice evening star candlestick pattern right here. This is what I really liked, and that actually supported the idea of further decline as well. So again, this is how I like to actually combine uh, just standard chart reading ability, i.e. trends up, trends down, old school patterns like head and shoulders type, th uh, type patterns, rectangles, flags, flagpoles, that sort of thing. But also, too, I like to combine the, that, with a, with the, that with the wave principle as well as more modern day type forms of technical analysis, indicators and oscillators, and certainly candlestick analysis. So this is why the forecast was made on Monday. We had a three wave advance, a zigzag, contained within parallel lines within a larger downtrending market. So in other words, in my, the way I view this price chart, it was simply a no-brainer to look for a further decline in this market. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at bean oil, and you'll see some very similar uh, ideas here. Now, with bean oil, again, you can clearly see, based on the daily price chart, the trend was down, or excuse me, the 240-minute price chart. The trend has been, has been down in, in soybean oil essentially since the April high. 
Now, when I made my forecast on Monday, we were trading again above the May low. We were right about here, and essentially what I was looking for was for prices to turn down from this area of Fibonacci resistance at 51.43, 51.85. And you can see at that time, this was the labeling I offered at the time. I was identifying this move as a fourth wave, and I was looking for this area to again looking for prices to move up to and then reverse from that Fibonacci resistance area. The small prior fourth wave move came into play right here on a very small time frame. So this was just a natural vicinity or natural region to look for a counter trend move to move toward and then reverse from. Now if we look at the smaller term time frame, this is a 45 minute price chart. Notice the substructure here. We have one, two, three, that's a three wave move. And then we have waves one, two, three to a new extreme by a few ticks, but yeah, to a new extreme. So that makes this overall pattern three up, three down to a new extreme. So we can look for either say a running triangle or whether I have identified it as an expanded flat. Now there's a way I draw, the way you draw your corrective price channel when working with an expanded flat is a bit different than the way you do it with a zigzag. What you do with an expanded flat in the Kennedy channeling technique or the corrective price channel in this instance is begin from the origin of wave A to the extreme of wave 4 of C which is this point right here and then you take a parallel of that line off the extreme of wave A and that essentially identifies resistance for wave C of the pattern which is right there that center trend line. Okay, so number one with respect to this pattern and the way it adhered to the trend lines was very supportive of further decline. This was a 335 pattern, specifically an expanded flat that argued for further decline. The fact that the uh, larger time frame chart, the 240 minute price chart, was clearly down, that argued for further decline because odds favor a trend continuing to persist and then reverse. Uh, that's a key tenant of uh, technical analysis in general. And also, too, one of the things I like to look at with respect to futures junctures, and I use quite often, is the RSI indicator. This is a standard 14 period setting. But one thing that's very important about uh, understanding how to utilize this indicator properly is that counter trend moves within a trend tend to, in a downtrending market, tend to hold roughly, say, 50, 60. In an uptrending market, you want to see RSI roughly hold about 50 or 40. So the fact that the RSI was continuing to push into 50 and 60 and then reverse on each occasion supports the idea that this is a counter trend move and in this instance again a fourth wave move within a larger downtrending market. This is again how I like to combine traditional technical tools like indicators and oscillators with the wave principle with candlestick analysis and other things like trend line analysis and the old school chart patterns. But I wanted to take today's uh, uh, the time today and today's episode of Elliott Wave Junctures to kind of look into those two forecasts which worked out quite nicely and everyone knows that isn't always the case but I wanted to look at those two forecasts specifically because they did work out so nicely, but also take some time to explain why the forecast was actually made to begin with, what I was looking at behind the scenes. And I hope I explained that. Thank you very much and have a great